Hello, in this video I will talk about mathematical operations on NumPy arrays. Um, we'll first start with a couple of arithmetic operators and uh, here we just create an array and then um, I will show you some of the operators that NumPy implements and it um, implements the usual ones such as multiplication with scalars, so here we just multiply by 3, um, addition of different arrays, um, yeah, subtraction, division, um, where here we have to be careful because if we're dividing um, we can't divide by zero and here in this case we actually did that already and it gives us a runtime warning. So here it tells us um, there was an invalid value encountered in the true divide function um, and here we can see the result that it gave us once uh, where the division worked and uh, NAN where it didn't work. I will talk about NAN values later. Yeah, then we can also use the multiplication for arrays, and this is just element-wise multiplication, so this would square the array. Um, and speaking of squaring, we can also just use the um, power operator uh, with two, for example, and here we just square every element as well. Then an operator, which you probably haven't seen before if you have never used uh, NumPy, it's the add um, operator or the matrix multiplication in NumPy and this will um, do a matrix multiplication for matrices and um, an inner product for two vectors. So if we have a one-dimensional array this will be the inner product. So if we do this with the, our array we'll get uh, 204. And that's um, actually the same as writing np.sum of uh, array times array. So it's just the dot product or inner product um, which is written as this add operator here. And then usually using these operators, uh, which are also called universal functions or ufuncs in NumPy, is um, faster than using um, yeah, your own implementations of what these operators can do anyways. And here um, we have the example of three different um, functions, lambda functions, which all create the same array, but take different amounts of time. And here the first one we uh, use repeat and then uh, repeat this A range from 1 to 4 uh, 30 times and do a reshape and flatten and uh, transpose as well. And then the second one, um, here we just create uh, 3 times 30 values in this A range Then use the modulo operator to uh, turn this into the range of 0 to 3 or 0 to 2, 0, 1 and 2 and uh, just add 1 so that we have 1, 2, 3. And here in the last function uh, we'll, we're uh, using a, a list comprehension with a custom Python code and as you can see in the timings here this uh, writing the list comprehension and um, doing everything manually took the longest um, and using all of these nice operators here um, yeah, just took 7 microseconds but also using these other NumPy functions um, didn't take too much longer. And um, the reason for these being faster is that um, these are actually vectorized. So um, you don't have to write a for loop, but uh, NumPy does that internally. And the NumPy for loops are very efficient because they don't actually use um, Python code, but they use uh, C and C++ code in the background. And you don't even notice that it's running, but it's um, a lot more efficient than the Python code you could write yourself. So this is the reason why you should always use these um, operators and universal functions from NumPy. Then some more functions um, NumPy defines. Um, we can use our array again and first we have the logarithm. It's just np.log and here again uh, we encountered an invalid value. Um, since the logarithm of zero is undefined um, here we get a negative infinity um, yeah, which makes sense because the uh, logarithm approaches negative infinity um, for x uh, approaching zero. So then we have the exponent, so e to the power of the array uh, gives us this. And um, yeah, here we have the sign, so the sign of the array um, just as a sign works. And um, here the sign with a g, um, the sign gives us um, the 
uh, yeah, minus one for negative values, plus one for positive ones, and zero for the zero. And this is just a way of um, yeah, getting the sign of the values. And they're all um, element-wise, as you saw. Okay, now we come to broadcasting. And broadcasting is a very um, powerful yeah, implementation in NumPy, uh, which is often used when using these operators. And oftentimes you don't even notice that it's used, but sometimes um, you can use these rules that I will talk about um, to make your code like smaller and um, I guess even more efficient and easier to look at. Um, so yeah, this broadcasting defines three rules and I'll go through these rules now. Um, the first one states that if so these broadcasting rules are always applied if you do some operation with uh, two arrays. Um, the first rule states that if the number of dimensions of the two arrays is different, then the array which has the smaller shape um, will be appended with um, new axes on the left. So you can um, look at these axes um, in the shape. So if we get the shape of the array, then we will add ones to this shape array on the left side. Um, and this is used for um, yeah, making sure that two arrays that you want to like, do some operation with have matching numbers of dimension. Um, and this broadcasting will deal with inconsistent uh, numbers of dimensions and shapes um, as defined with these three rules. And for the first rule here in the example, um, we have a shape five times three, so a matrix with five rows and three columns, and we want to add uh, a vector with three entries. Um, yeah, and then what this broadcasting rule does is it takes this smaller one, so the vector here, and just adds a one on the left side of the shape. So it makes a matrix out of this, um, out of this vector, so they have the same number of dimensions. And these don't yet have the same shape, and this is where rule two comes in. And rule two states that if um, the number of dimension is correct, so the two arrays have the same number of dimension, but the uh, sizes of these dimensions do not match, so the shape is uh, inconsistent, then those shapes, so those dimensions with the size of one, are expanded to the corresponding uh, dimension of the other array. So here in this example, now we have this matrix five by three, and we want to add this matrix one by three. And the second rule will expand this one dimension here so that it matches with this five here. So it will just um, repeat the um, vector because this is basically a vector, um, a matrix with just one row is a vector. And um, yeah, we'll repeat this vector five times so that these two have the same shape. And then the third rule says that um, if after applying the first and second rule, the shapes still don't match, um, we will raise an error. And uh, then NumPy says that it can't uh, broadcast these two shapes together. Um, yeah, this broadcasting is very powerful and important. So maybe you could also pause the video and make sure that you really understood these rules and um, that you got an intuitive understanding of how they work. Uh, this image might also help with that. And it shows uh, at the top row here the first rule and the second one and uh, yeah, a final example for how this would look. And uh, yeah, here, for example, we want to um, add a scalar to just a vector. So np.a range of three plus five, for example. And um, what it will do in the first rule is make a vector out of this scalar. So it will repeat this. Um, this is scalar three times here. And um, yeah, then um, wait, this is actually the first and the second rule combined because um, this scalar has a dimension of zero basically, uh, where um, it's just one number, a vector would already have the dimension of one. And then first rule, it makes a vector out of it. And the second rule, it repeats um, this vector three times because we need to match this shape. So these are just um, examples for the rules. Okay, um, then we have another example here uh, where we show how broadcasting works. And we first create this array A 
and um, we make it have sh uh, we make it uh, have the size sh um, five by three. So it's uh, five rows and three columns, and then we create another vector, um, which is just zero, one, and two. So it's uh, one dimensional, and then we would like to add these two. And you can already see that these shapes don't match yet. So what the broadcasting will do is um, take this array and make a matrix out of it. So first rule one will make a matrix out of this with one um, row and um, yeah three columns, which will basically look like this. And then um, rule two will come in and expand this one dimensional size uh, dimension and uh, make this a five by three matrix by repeating this uh, vector. And then if we execute this, we can see this actually worked and uh, we were able to add these two um, yeah, arrays together. And in this example here, this is an example where it doesn't work. And uh, we, went, we would like to try to add um, four, an, a vector with four elements to this A, which is the matrix again here. And this doesn't work because even after the play, applying these two rules, um, the C would be a matrix uh, with five rows and four columns. And uh, yeah, this doesn't match the five by three from A. Now we we'll come to uh, aggregate function. And these functions are uh, ways of changing the dimensionality of arrays. And they all provide this axis argument. And the axis argument uh, says which of the uh, dimensions should be reduced. Um, in the last lecture, uh, Chris talked about the reduce function. And these aggregation functions basically um, also use a reduce operation, um, but you can also specify this axis. And if you don't specify the axis, so it's an optional argument, it will operate on the whole array and um, basically flatten the array first and then apply this function. Okay, so here we just uh, create a random example array. And uh, then we would like to call the minimum function, so np.min. Uh, we pass the array and we get zero. Zero is the minimum of this array. And as I said, if we don't specify axis, it will do that over the whole array. Then if we do specify axis, here we say axis equals zero. It will take the first dimension, which in our case are the rows, um, and call minimum for each um, yeah, vector in the first dimension. So it will not take these uh, rows, basically, but will, it will take the row dimension and reduce that. So it will actually take the columns um, because yeah, this vertical dimension is basically um, the first one and this is the one that gets eliminated. So what this does um, is return another array and uh, here we have four elements which are um, yeah, the minimum values of the four columns of this array. Okay, um, we can also do this with more than one dimension or two dimensions, but we can also do this with three-dimensional arrays or basically n-dimensional arrays. And um, yeah, in this example here, we do it with a three-dimensional one, uh, which has the shape four by four by four. And then we call it minimum um, with axis zero, and this will give us a matrix now. And this matrix um, contains the minimum values for all the, um, yeah, slices of axis zero. And what this means is, um, we'd like to show you that here. Um, it basically creates a for loop over the first dimension because we said axis zero, so it will use the first dimension. It will create the for loop here and um, iterate over um, the different uh, yeah, values in this first dimension. And um, we just print the first one here, for example. Here we just print 0, 0, um, which will be the top left corner of each of these blocks. And um, this is what would be this top left value here. So this 0, 0 uh, just means we just care about the top left value for now. And if we run this, uh, we get these four values, which are actually the top left corners of these four blocks. And what then um, yeah, is done by the min function, it just takes the minimum of them and uh, puts that in the correct slot here. Okay, um, so now we have um, a three another three-dimensional array. 
and um, we just want to show this again so using min without an axis just returns the overall minimum um, which is zero here then using a minimum over the first axis returns a matrix um, with the minimum for these different slices and um, yeah here as another example is um, what it would look like if we use um, axis zero and then just print out all the matrices that it encounters in these slices um, yeah and so these are um, the these slices that it can see all right so now um, for axis one we use the same array and then call minimum with axis one and then if we print out the slices again um, this time it's the middle um, dimension that is uh, iterated over and uh, yeah here we again get the slices that the minimum sees and will um, basically put into the right um, parts of the output matrix so the minimum matrix and then finally for the last axis um, this will just loop over the last dimension here and um, yeah this will again show you the slices that the minimum function sees okay um, and yeah of course the shape um, of the resulting array is different from the um, shape of the original array namely the difference is that um, the shape uh, the dimension of the axis um, that we specified was removed so if we have a three-dimensional array and um, we specify a minimum with uh, axis one then it will take the first and the last shape uh, dimension from the shape and um, yeah the output of this min function will have the shape with the first and the last dimension okay and um, now to show again that these functions defined from uh, defined by numpy are faster than uh, doing it yourself here we uh, show the example with the min function we first here have the min uh, with python code which just um, iterates over the given axis here uh, so in this case it's the the last axis here the third one and um, yeah it just gets the minimum of these slices and uh, yeah, afterwards we use this min function just with the axis equals to, and you can see that this uh, numpy min function was uh, quite a bit faster than um, yeah this this custom find minimum function. And again, these microseconds for now are not really important, but if you have larger uh, arrays, more data, um, and you don't want to do just one operation, but I don't know. A thousand, oper a thousand operations on um, each array then these differences can uh, make a large difference in the outcome um, time so it can be a lot faster if you have more data and yeah this will scale up okay now a quick word on the NAN which we saw before uh, NAN stands for not a number and that's basically what that is and uh, NumPy defines such a not a number object and uh, this gets inserted whenever we have a value that is not a number so it's an undefined value but um, we can't leave it empty because uh, these numpy arrays have a fixed dimension have a fixed shape um, in the computer memory and we can't just leave out one value because that would make um, all the operations a lot uh, more inefficient and slower so if we have a value that is undefined NumPy will insert this NAN and um, yeah there's some spe uh, specific um, things to keep in mind when using NAN first of all is that NAN doesn't equal NAN so it's not itself basically um, and NumPy defines it that way because uh, this is an undefined number and an undefined number is basically equal to nothing because it's undefined but if we want to check if something is an undefined number, so an NAN, uh, we can use this is NAN function uh, from NumPy, and this will return true if we input um, an NAN. Okay, and here we just create a new array. Um, this 
np.r underscore is just a fancy way of concatenating these arrays. Um, it's going to take this a range and um, these five zeros and just concatenate them to, together um, to create this new array. And um, yeah, we can use this one to, to get to other examples. So first uh, we divide a by itself and save the result in b. And you can already see here that we have lots of zeros. And if we divide a by itself, we're going to divide by zero a couple of times. And um, yeah, if we do this, we get this warning again, but um, it still worked and still returned something. Um, it's just an array with NAN values. So wherever there was a zero here, um, the divide made that become an NAN. And um, we can check where in this array we encounter NAN values using this is NAN function again. But uh, if we want to invert this and basically get all the um, positions where um, it's not NAN, we can use this tilde operator. And this is the invert operator, um, which will just take the opposite. Um, so for example, for Boolean, this is defined as uh, false if you have true and true if you have false. And uh, yeah, this just flips this uh, array. Then we can also use this to uh, index or to mask um, the B array. And uh, we can use this tilde um, is none of B to just get the values in B that are not NAN. Okay. And um, now we can, um, now I have an example where we um, do a divide, but we want to be sure that we don't encounter any n values in the result, even though we're, we're not sure that um, we don't have any zeros in our array. And um, we can do that by using this divide function from NumPy. And we um, say we divide a by a, and uh, we specify this out. And out is an array uh, of the same sh shape as a. Um, and this is important because the result of this division will also be the shape of a. And this, um, yeah, we basically give it a template of what values it should take um, if it failed. And um, this where tells it where it will fail. And uh, it will fail wherever um, a is zero. So um, where actually tells us where it will not fail. Um, so wherever a is unequal to zero, um, then it should use this division, division uh, result. And wherever it was zero, it should just take the result from this out. And um, yeah, this returns this array where we have zeros, uh, where we would have divided by zero, and then just ones because we divided a by itself, and that will be one. Okay. Um, we can also use these aggregation functions uh, with more than one axis at the same time. So um, here we first create an array again, it's a three-dimensional array, and um, we call this min, and uh, we pass uh, one and two as the axis. So this will um, basically do the min operation over the two axis and just give us this, um, yeah, this four, uh, this vector with four elements because um, we just had um, the dimension four in the first, um, yeah, first part of the shape here. So axis with one and two will remove the last two, um, yeah, the last two dimensions of the shape. Okay, and uh, now I will talk about some more uh, useful aggregation functions. We have this uh, two-dimensional array again, which we will use for the examples. And then the first one, um, the opposite of the min function is the max. This just returns the maximum value in the array. Um, of course, this also works with um, the axis uh, parameter again. Then we also have sum. This will just take the sum of the array. Um, also, again, works with the axis, just as before. Um, yeah, and a lot of these functions, these aggregation functions, are actually defined uh, twice. Once with this NP, so once inside the normal uh, NumPy module, where you have to um, pass the array, and um, they're again defined in uh, the ND array class. So you can directly call them as a method on the array objects. And then you don't have to pass the array itself because it's um, yeah a method called on the object. And the 
uh, method call knows about itself. Um, yeah, but we can also pass the axis, um, and this just does the same as uh, the call before we had here. So np.sum, uh, when passing, passing this array with axis 0, the same as calling sum on the array itself. Okay, and now the last operator, uh, the last aggregation function I want to talk about is um, flatten. Well, it's probably not really an aggregation function because it doesn't reduce, um, but it still converts um, the dimension of an array. And here we create um, yeah, a multi-dimensional array. It has six dimensions. Um, and yeah, it's not really useful, I guess, but there might be examples where you want to, uh, there might be cases where you want to um, make a one-dimensional array out of um, multi-dimensional arrays. And uh, this could happen quite quite often, I guess. So this is a typical example. And for that, we can use the flatten. And flatten just takes uh, all the dimensions and um, yeah, makes one out of them. So it basically is the, uh, has the number of elements um, equal to the product of the shape of the array. And um, because we use the A range in defining the array here, this will just give us the values from 0 to uh, 63 um, as a one-dimensional array as flatten returns.